the system is broken. We are at the end of this cycle of building everything upon debt. We are at that point where the exponential growth of the debt makes it unsustainable. We must be utilizing this time to prepare for this certainty, a new era that no one has really seen before of significant inflation, a very weak currency, a lack of jobs, a lack of growth. I mean, all of these things are coming and people need to be utilizing this time to prepare for that. Unfortunately, not many people are. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. Today our special guest is Craig Hemke, otherwise known as Turd Ferguson, founder of the TF metals report extremely popular online blog and environment where people find out about what's really going on in the world of precious metals welcome and joining us here on reluctant preppers turn and again it's my pleasure thank you i'm hoping today that you could talk with us about uh, what's really going on in asset markets what people should and shouldn't trust as they look to really protect themselves and maybe also at the end, if you could just let us know a little bit about what preparedness steps you've taken personally, walk the walk, so to speak. But just to, at the very beginning, a lot of people are very busy. They're in their careers, their jobs. They're, they've got conventional sources of information that we're all being exposed to. And yet they may have this uneasy feeling that things are not as we've been led to believe. So could you speak a little bit to that uh, reality that people are facing, what what it may be that they're sensing, and some of the facts that you know that are going on in that arena. You know, it, it, it's an interesting point and a great question because uh, folks that sense that, 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 you know, in their daily busy lives of, of caring for their families and worrying about, you know, their p aging parents and worrying about, you know, putting their kids into college and everything else, um, they likely sense, though, when they have the time to look around them, that things aren't right. You know, ever since the, uh, the great financial collapse in 2008, I mean, here we're still talking about, hey, it's finally a recovery six years later. Um, and, it, and that kind of promotes a general sense of unease for a lot of folks. Um, it, what I can kind of add from my perspective is that I was in that same boat. I spent uh, the better part of 20 years as a uh, somehow somehow related to the securities industry as a stockbroker uh, in what they call a wholesale of of mutual funds um, always tied very closely in with the markets and the economy I have a degree in economics I mean all of this stuff and so I was I, I bought it hook line and sinker all the way through about 2008 and it was at that point that I finally had a chance to really sit down and, and devote some mental energy into what was really going on. And so I guess what I'm saying is I was just the exact same as anybody else that might be listening and thinking, you know, wondering what is really going on um, and feeling uneasy about it. That's where I was in 2008. I've just have had the benefit of, of being able to spend a lot of time just observing and thinking and, and, and it really was a very eye-opening experience. And what I found is that it really isn't uh, true at this point. What you read and uh, what you are told in the financial media is all, I guess, what we like to call mope or spin, mope being a management of perceptions, M-O-P, and that Ben Bernanke and all of these folks that, that set monetary policy and run the Fed are big believers of what they call the wealth effect. That's something folks can Google if they want to, you know, find out more of what that means. And the wealth effect is this idea that if, if everybody can kind of feel like everything's going well, if you sense that you, you see that your 401k balance is going up, that everybody's going to feel great and things are just going to get better and it's going to be this virtuous cycle. It since the economy has been kind of moribund and and all the banks have been zombies since 2008, this mope, this a spin that everything is just great and, and go out and buy yourself a new refrigerator has really taken hold. As part of all of that is the gross manipulation now of nearly every 
um, I guess we'll call it market, all, right. all, the, all the way down to the stock market. There is, there's no attachment to, to fundamental reality in the stock market. And a lot of folks go, gosh, why does the stock market keep going up every day? That, I mean, everybody's going to, if you're listening, think, oh, that's just some kind of conspiracy theory. No, it's not. This is how it works. The, the Fed has their network of primary dealer banks. Those banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are getting a cash infusion on a daily basis that we call quantitative easing. And part of that money is going directly into the stock market buying highly leveraged things, uh, derivatives, futures contracts to keep pushing it higher, all in the grand scheme of this wealth effect to create this illusion that all is well, uh, when in fact all is not. And so when people see the stock market going up and, and may take action, such as you're saying, you know, doing more consumer spending, taking on more debt, that sort of thing because of that, that's not necessarily acting in concert with the underlying health of the real economy or their uh, best way of reducing risk for their family. So where else should they be looking? What else is really going on and what should they, what other options should they be considering? Well, you know, another thing that people need to understand the um, the gross, I guess we'll call it the median income of the U.S. individual, the U.S. person, has actually fallen by more than 10 percent since 2009. So there's a real squeeze going on, and I think this is something that folks are feeling too. You know, they they recognize that maybe their wages are stagnant, or they're just happy to have a job, but. Uh, all, and all at the same time, the costs of everyday living are, are going through the roof, whether it's a gallon of gasoline or a gallon of milk or uh, the, the hamburger that you might buy to, to feed your family, everything, just the, your, the costs of daily living are, are skyrocketing. And I think, and that's really causing, I, I think that's another one of these factors that gives people pause to think, yeah, something just doesn't feel right. And so, yes, what what you need uh, most first and foremost, what people really need to do is take it upon themselves um, to find out these things independently, and 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 not just simply be fed what uh, the government and the media want you to believe is some kind of story, some kind of truth that you know that all is well, and gosh, everything's great, and and and, and, it, and it's nothing but sunshine and lollipops ahead. People need to sit down, trust their own instincts. You know, believe their eyes, um, hear what comes in their ears, and then plan accordingly because the system is broken. We are at the end of a this cycle of building everything upon debt. Um, that can only work until it doesn't. We are at the, that point where the exponential growth of the debt makes it unsustainable. And we must be utilizing this time to prepare, as I guess we're discussing, for this certainty um, of, I guess, you know, and the strongest word would be economic collapse, but it more likely um, a new era of uh, that, that no one has really seen before of, of significant inflation, a very weak currency, uh, a lack of jobs, a lack of growth. I mean, all of these things are coming and every, people need to be utilizing this time to prepare for that. And unfortunately, not many people are. So what are some specific steps that the average person can take to get started? It can seem daunting if you haven't stepped out of the conventional paradigm that, that we're all you know, walking in lockstep in, in, in this modern culture. So what are some, some basic steps that people can take that, that don't seem overwhelming at first just to get started? From a financial standpoint, um, you just have to expect like I said, significant uh, cost of living increases as as we go forward. And so even if you don't have a lot of savings, even if you're not sitting on you know a $500,000 401k, you can protect yourself from that by, um, I don't know, let's say stockpiling or storing, but, uh, but buying now at a cheaper price. If that means instead of buying uh, just one new coat for your kids in anticipation of next winter, buy two. Because by the winter of 2016, things are probably going to be even more expensive than they are today. Uh, if it means uh, instead of buying, if you, if you have access to this, in, instead of buying uh, a hamburger a pound at a time, uh, buy it bulk and put it in a freezer in your basement. I mean, there are a number of things just on the very basic level that people can do to uh, not only protect themselves financially, but also prepare in case something more uh, cataclysmic happens. 
from a financial production standpoint, this is the thing we mainly discuss at TF Metals Report. It is imperative that you have physical gold and physical silver, not uh, shares of an ETF uh, or or you know gold held in a in an account somewhere that you don't you don't you don't know where it is or you can't see it. I'm talking about the actual metal, uh, whether it's gold coins, uh, silver coins, silver bars. This does two separate things for you. One, it is a store of wealth. Gold has been sound money and a store of wealth for quite literally millennia. Going back, you know, to the Egyptians, uh, you could you'll find references to gold and its use as money. The same is true now. Uh, you want to own gold as a protection against the devaluation and destruction of this dollar-based system that the that the world has used now for 70 years. You want to own silver, though, too, for the same reasons. But silver also protects your purchasing power. And in the event of a disorderly societal unrest type of situation, which is certainly possible, silver can be very valuable um, just because it's in much smaller denominations. Silver can be very valuable even all the way down at the barter level. You know, not saying that <laughs> that's a certainty, but, you know, if something happens where uh, there's a bank holiday, there's a run on cash, that type of thing. Having silver on hand, physical silver and physical gold, can also serve you um, just in terms of being able to acquire everyday goods. So precious metal is a significant part of your preparation for these events, these events that are most certainly coming. Are there any other preparatory steps that you would either recommend or that you've done personally that you could share with our viewers? Well, I I do. Um, I don't store a lot of food. You know, I mean, there are people you see on TV, you know, with three and four years worth of water and food, you know, and all that kind of stuff in a bunker. Um, I don't have that, but I'm also not living day to day out of the pantry either. And so you do that. There are, I, boy, I would really make sure you have something like a Berkey water filter and a, a bunch of extra filters, because if there were ever uh, some type of situation where the, the your grid collapsed, or heck, just a tornado went through your town, and you had a lack or not access to fresh water for three or four days, you're going to want something like that. Um, we talk about the, your your guaranteed your your insurance of precious metal, not only of of protecting the purchasing power and and, the, and as a store of wealth, that's obviously very significant too. But I got to tell you, all the way down, I would never have even considered six, seven years ago uh, being a gun owner and uh, uh, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not fluent, but practiced and accurate. <laughs> sure, a marksman. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I would never even, I, I would never have thought of that. Again, it's not, you know, I'm not a gun owner and an ammunition owner for that gun in preparation of, you know, having to set up sandbags at the end of my driveway, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Right. But, but, you know, we've seen, there have been psychological studies done that if there are ever disasters, you know, for the first 24 hours or so, everybody gets along fine. And Civil, all, yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. After 48 hours, people start to get a little nervous that maybe no one's coming to help. And by 72 hours, everything falls apart. You know, God forbid there's uh, some type of war or, uh, you know, EMP event or something. I mean, all these things that are, you know, the odds are stacked astronomically against it. But at the same time, there's a, you never know about, and, and there's even a, I don't want to say likelihood, but there's at least a potential that should there ever be significant societal unrest, and I, you know, caused by a, some lack of food distribution or whatever, you're going to want some type of protection for yourself and for your family. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not, <laughs> I don't own a gun because I'm expecting to a shootout at the OK Corral. However, uh, in the unlikely event that something like that ever happens, I'm, I'm going to be glad that I have one. Right. And so, that wouldn't be the time that you could acquire anything if you needed one. We've so many people that we've seen experienced directly when there was severe weather events in our area and uh, stores were wiped out of things or when Congress announces some uh, restriction on high, high capacity magazines or ammunition or whatever. And we'd go to the, the uh, sporting supply store and there's just nothing there. 
So yeah. the uh, just-in-time supply chains are so thin that the only time to acquire something that you might need is when you don't need it. So that, that your, your advice is well taken there. And I know that uh, your time is short and we need to let you go and we'll have to have you back on. But before we do, can you let people know how they can find out more about your work if they would like to uh, hear more of what you, your advice and your things you have to say? Yeah, I appreciate that, Dan. Again, it, it, my website is called TF, the turd Ferguson, uh, tfmetalsreport.com, all one word. Um, kind of like my background of kind of stumbling into this five, six years ago, recognizing that things weren't right. Um, that's what this site is set up for. We call the kind of subtitle to it is uh, preparing for the end of the great Keynesian experiment. Keynes being the economist who kind of uh, was the godfather of all of this debt induced um, central planned government that we have. And that's all coming to an end. And, and so the site is built on that notion that we're all here to help each other. So as opposed to your regular internet site where you know, it's sniping and, and people calling each other names. And, I mean, it's just not – TF Metals Report is completely different. We're all there to help each other. And people provide links through the forums and, and through all the different threads. To, and there's just some great uh, forums and threads that discuss uh, disaster preparation and, and financial preparation, too. So I'd, I'd encourage anybody listening to at least come check it out. Again, tfmetalsreport.com. And, and it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's a different place, and I think most folks will enjoy being a part of it. We'll encourage our viewers to check that out. We'll include a link to your website in the description of this video. Craig Hemke, thank you for being with us today. We'll have to have you back again here on Reluctant Preppers in the near future. Don't again, it was an honor and a pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Thank you.